our eyes from tears, our souls from death, and our feet from falling. That's why we're standing before you this morning. So say thank you. Accept our worship. Thank you for your power that is at work in us. You have raised us up with Christ. Yes, you have made us like Jesus. You have raised us with him. You have caused us to live in him and seated in him in perpetual triumph. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Please take your seat. Amen. Yesterday, all over the world, we celebrated Children's Day. Our next generation. Hallelujah. Are there children, you, teenagers, and youth in the house put your hand together for the Lord? God knows that you are important. Government knows that you are important. United Nations know that you are important. And the church knows that you are important. I want to share a word this morning with a title Maintaining Godly Heritage. Praise the Lord. Maintaining Godly Heritage. My text is from Psalm 78, 1 to 11. Psalm 78, 1 to 11. Praise the Lord. I read quickly. Give ear to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Let me go to Queen James. I will open my mouth in a parable that is in knowledge. I will utter dark sayings of old. This is the hidden wisdom which we have heard and known and our fathers have told praise God I would like you to take note of that Amen and our fathers have told us we will not hide them from their children we will not hide them from our children Amen our fathers have passed this information about God to us Showing to the generation to come. Generations to come. Our children, children, children. The praises of the Lord and his strength, his wonderful works that he has done. Verse 5. For he has established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers that they should not that they should make them known to their children. Commanded them to make them known to their children. That the generation to come might know them. That the generation to come, those who will be born first generation to talk to four to ten till Jesus comes back. They might know them. Even the children who should be born are in the program of God and, and, and are in the assignment that God has given to us as parents who should arise and declare them to their children. Verse 7, that they might set their hope in God. They might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God but keep the commandment that they might set their hope in God that they might set their hope in God, that they may not forget the works of God, but to keep his commandment. I believe the parents are noting this assignment, this commitment, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was steadfast. Whose spirit was not steadfast with God? They are swearing. Today they are with God. Tomorrow they are not. One day in his service, another day they are not. They are not committed to God at all. Their heart was straight. And this generation suffered. Until God raised a prophet to explain to them what had happened. And that's what the prophet is explaining here. Calling them to order. Because he had seen some elemental revival coming up. 
They kept not the covenant of God. They did not keep the covenant. They refused to walk in the law. They refused to walk with the words that God had passed on to them. And forget his work, his wonders that he had shown them. The Lord bless his reading. Praise the Lord. It's very lengthy, but we will not take that time. I'll just bring out the point here. This is the time Israel was suffering, and God was tracing, the prophet traced their suffering and decadence to their role, to what they did, how they forgot their God. They forgot the wonders, the marvelous work, the good work they had done to them, and how did they do it? They forgot, they did not, they failed to pass on the experience of God that they had, they didn't tell their children. They did not get their, their children connected. They did not educate them properly about their God. So that generation that knew God died. And another generation came. Children that do not know God. Complacent parents. Serving God with all vigor. That generation passed. And then things turn around. They turn to bars. They started worshipping Adol, all manner of gods, even importing them to Israel. And God was enraged. He destroyed them. He caused them to perish in the wilderness as a result of prayer and intercession. Because at any point in time, God will raise a voice that will redirect the people back to himself at every point in time. So he raised a prophet and he was pointing to them the reason why they are going through all they are doing. So he reminded them, say, this is the world. This is the world. This is the great things that our God did for our fathers. But they failed to pass on to their children. It, that, should not be, that, that should not happen in our own time. Tell your children. I open my mouth in a parable. I utter the dark saying of all oh, the things that you don't know. And that is why you are suffering today as a nation. But see, we will not hide them from our children. What is the testimony of God? You are telling your children. That's why we have so many places today that the parents are favored serving God and the children are not serving God. Go around this street today. 90% of the people you see playing football there are Christians. Their parents took them to church, dedicated them. Go run all the drinking joint today, 90% of them you are seeing are Christians. Ask of their names, Emmanuel, Daniel, even Sunday could be there. James, Jehovah, prosperity, success, favor, anointing, grace, multiplication. That's the name they give now. To cover spiritual work. Miracles. Multiplication. Prosperity. Multiply grace. I've seen such names. See where they are. It's not in the names. But what do you pass on? Say we will not hide them from their children. We will show them to generations. Parents who have commitment to pass on the knowledge and the fear of God to their children, to the first, to third, to fourth generation, and there must be a continuity in that commitment. Praise the Lord. If you look at verse 9, the Bible says, because they did not do this, the children of Ephraim, a tribe in Israel, a tribe in Israel, the son of Joseph, that was, a, that was counted as a tribe, was privileged. He was not born by Jacob, but was the son of Joseph, you know of Ephraim and Manasseh. But they were counted as a tribe. This guy, as prepared as he was, he was armed, he was equipped, he had everything to take, and there was war. He turned back. And the Bible said, Ephraim, as an unturned cake. Not cooked. Not balanced. The Bible acknowledged that the children of Ephraim being armed and carrying bows. 
So it is not enough to give your children educational training and other life skills if you don't balance it with godly life. If you do not train them in the way of God. When the challenges of time come, there's no spiritual strength to withstand the day of adversity. All your training, all your investment will go down the drain. He said, he forgot his works and his wonders that he had shown to them. What made David triumphant is that he remembered how God delivered the bear and the lion into his hand. He had a testimony. Can I speak to parents this morning? I encourage you to take charge of training your children. Because they fail to pass to their children the wonderful works of God that children went after other goals. It's a failure of parenthood. It's a failure of parenthood. For a child under, under, under your care and in your house to have choices of what to do. And you say, let him or her do what you want to do. It's a failure of parenthood. No matter how he or she has gone, God put you, put the responsibility of training that child on you. A child in your heart does not have choices other than the choice you are made for him or her. That was what happened to the people of Israel. They become rebellious. That's the rebellion. No matter how their option is, and with the anointing of Samson, he died the way he died because he did not listen to the parents. You have become so anointed, but before your anointing, the angel, the angel had already spoken to your mother. So she was anointed. Isn't it? Your parent has got a word concerning you. He said, look, you conceive, you bear a child. There will not be razor on his head. And that mom is talking to you. And son, you cannot go to the land of Philistine. He said, no, I have the love for my life there. After all, I am anointed. With his anointing, he died. You say he killed so many people, or what use? If you kill so many, I lose your life. The Bible says, What shall he profit a man if he gained the whole world and loses his life? I want you to seek in any independence. When you are not independent, is a pathway to death. Praise God. And because of that, you may equip a child with every skill. I said that earlier. Giving education and all those things, you do not give God. You do not give proper parenthood. I pray that we will not leave our children to the wind. Something went with the wind. I don't know the parent. I don't know if they I don't I didn't know if the pair had Koboko. Eh? You find love? The Lord says it's not good there. Eh? I'll flog you to lie. What did I say? I'll flog you. Praise God. Even the one that I said I say a lawyer now, I still flog her. You are surprised. They must they must throw the the line. I was about flogging the younger one last night. She quickly understood and escaped. And never returned until I slept. Independence? Hey, don't you know they are you that are teenagers? Teen what? At least I'm your senior. Teen what? Teenager uni? Praise God. And this is why something died. But yes, it's a lot of challenges. It's very, very huge. Look at what Jesus said. Jesus answered them and said unto them, Very, very, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do. For what things soever the father doeth, the son will do. 
And again, why the children cannot be committed to God? Because we parents are not committed to God. That's John 5, 19. Is Jesus speaking? Say the son cannot do anything except what? Except he sees the father do. So don't go and kill your child to be godly when you are not godly. Don't tell him to be, he will have to be committed to God when you are not committed to God. John 5, 19. The son can do nothing except what? Except what he sees the father do. What he sees the mother do. You want the child to grow, to be powerful, to be anointed, to carry grace, to be properly behaved, to, to honor God, and for you to be satisfied, then check your life. This is Jesus. The son can do, meaning the daughter, the son, the child, the teenager, the youth, cannot do anything of himself, but what he sees the father do, and what he sees the mother do. For what things soever he doeth, this also doeth the son likewise. Is somebody with me? Before you to go home today and start flogging them. Praise God. Are you with me? So that your children will not come, become like the children of Belia's sons the Ephraim. With all written, they are praying to invest in them. When challenges of life comes, they cannot stand it. Because there's no spiritual anchor. A child may not a child may not be favored for God if he has not seen the parents. So, a child will not do what he did not see. And that's why the Bible says, train up a child the way he should go. And when he grow up, he will not do what? He will not depart from it. And let me drop this. Let me drop before I go on. This is difficult to achieve if the two parents are not working together. Praise God. And that's what happened to Ahab. Ahab and Jezebel. Ahab was the king over Israel. Ten tribes. The northern Israel. Are you getting me right? He was the king. And a day you are called to him that Naboth should give him his vineyard. As a king, as a man, he went to Naboth, negotiated, and Naboth said, no, I will not give my father's inheritance. And the king went back to his house and sat down. It's like somebody who went for to look for a business he did not get, so he was not feeling happy. He was not celebrating. And Jezebel came. He said, Why is the king moody? I wanted to buy that land. But neighbor said no. Are you getting me right? Neighbor said no. Who is neighbor? And you agree? I'm bringing out something. See the man, see the wife. And you agree? Say, what can say? Don't. Don't care and fix it. You must be a lazy man. How can you agree? You know, there are some men, some women who run their husband into problems. Say, I agree. So he yeah, arranged and killed neighbors. I took the land. The consequences. I want to tell you this, this morning. Many times people say, spirit of Jezebel is a spirit of adultery. It is not so. Have they ever caught Jezebel sleeping with another man? When the Bible fair, the spirit of Jezebel is controlling force over the husband. And idolatry, not adultery, idolatry, that they adore worship, and a woman who has a controlling force over the man is Jezebel. See what happened? They have died at the war front. Am I right? That war, he went and the prophet came. He hired Jehoshaphat 
to come and follow him to war. And Joseph said, No, I will not go to war until I hear from God. See a story of two people. I will not go to war until I hear. So he brought the prophets. They said, Ah, you go and return. Hey, king. And the man of God, sensitive in his spirit, he said, Is there no any other prophet in this land? Because all those prophets were prophesying lies for what they want to gain, for applause, for prosperity, and possibly for profit offering. He said, There's one. He doesn't say anything good about me. He said, No, at least I see him. I won't see that. Say what is his name? He said, I'm Isaiah. He sent for him. And Isaiah knows that this king likes, likes to hear lies. Like some church members. They prefer lies. When you tell them the truth, they leave your church. They want to ask them to go where. Say nothing happened. Just come. Pay your tithe. Bring your offering. Be active. Do anything you like. There's no pro problem. And they are enjoying the seat. And the man came. You won't lie. Ah, I see the king. Victorious. The enemy running. And Jehoshaphat suffered back. Please tell me the truth. Say he doesn't like to say, okay, what do you say? I see Israel scattered like sheep. He said, Shabi, I told you, he will not say anything good about me. He commanded his servant, said, burn him, feet and leg, drop him in a, in a dark room, and give him a bread of affliction until I come back. Meaning, maltreat him, don't feed him well till I come back. And his aim would probably that when he comes back, he will kill him. And that's why I say, you coming back, coming back for where? Except the Lord did not send me. He died in that war front. Jezebel. When he died, Jephu took over. Jezebel ran. And hid in the room. He was pushed down. God does a prophet. When nobody died, Nobody died. Say the same way. Say the, the blood of this pers uh, person, dogs will lick that blood in the center of the city of Samaria. When she was hiding, she was pushed down. She died, and her body was dragged on the floor to city center, and dogs ate her up. It did not end there. It did not end there. Remember, Ahab is the king of Israel. A covenant, he, he, he had a root to Abraham, had a root to Isaac, had a root to a to God. A covenant child brought someone who has no idea of God, and he could not influence, he could not put his leg and say, You cannot worship idol in my house. Because of that, they could not train their children. Let me tell you what happened to, to, to them. When Jehu became king, Ahab had 70 sons. Are you getting me right? 70 grown up children who were not brought up in the way of God. He sent later to the provinces that they fixed out all the children of Ahab. Praise God. And 70 of them. In the book of Second Kings chapter 10, this is a long story, 70 of them were added five. And it came to pass, when the letter came to them, that they took the king's sons and slew 70 persons and put their heads in basket and sent to them and sent them to Zezri. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? 70, 70 sons. One day, their heads were cut off. Sent to Zezri. Say, God forbid. That child you are papering today, that you cannot tell the truth or the gospel, you are training him or her to death. I better flog you and live than allow you to go and die on the street. Spare the king, spoil the child. 
That's what the Bible says. Spare the king. It is not love if you don't correct your child. It's not love if you do not demonstrate proper parenthood. We are in a world that you need to put, you are working against forces. There are forces that are so strong, so fast, that your effort. Those forces are called social media. Social media. You are dragging. They have gone 20 kilometers ahead of you. You need to be ahead. By the time your child speaks one word, you should know where it will end. Just yes. yes. Even innocent question has implication. Permit me to say. A day, one of my daughter asked my wife, What sacrifice did you make to marry Brother Sunday? He said, I didn't sacrifice anything. You didn't leave your study. So you didn't leave your study. That's why they love you so much. Ask you to stop reading so that he will marry you. That person is a very wicked person. Say to yourself, he's what? Say he's a wicked man. The person had, had graduated. Who, he said, you can't make any sacrifice that you love me. You sacrifice to drop at 200 level. To sacrifice. What is love? What is the value of love? How much is love? Again, love. Again, love. How much is it? Eh? How much is it attached to love? No love can make a child to trade off his or her destiny. Tell him you are not in love, you are in foolishness. You are in foolishness. And who does it take? Use Cain. Because the people say, Cain, we wrote a question, send away, give her, bam, foolishness will go. Before he thinks it, he will think, think, think about you first. Before everyone give it att uh, attention, he will think about what I wait. So they coordinate. Praise God. Many children are, when, when I talk about children, I will have adults, grown adults who are wasted today. Praise God. Parent, please. I would like to stop on this note with the parents. I pray. And I want to add one word to children. Teenagers. Youth, especially. This service is purposely packaged for your day. But I started from the parents. When a parent have done all this, have done their best, Putting you putting a child in the way of God, the child has direction. You have grown. That does not mean that challenges will not come. Is that all right? Challenges will come. Give me Matthew chapter four. Challenges will come. Verse that verse three, chapter three, verse seventeen. That's the last verse of uh, chapter three. Say, when Jesus was baptized, the heaven opened, and there was a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I well believe. Isn't it? Then, chapter 4. No, give me God straight to chapter 4. My beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. That's the next chapter. Then Jesus was led up in the spirit to the wilderness to fast and to pray for life preparation. There's something I call life preparation challenges. I started this on Wednesday. I mentioned it on Wednesday. I didn't have time to go into detail. Jesus now was supposed to start his own life. He was no longer the capital son. God has announced him as his son with a mandate and a commission. But while he was preparing for life, 
certain challenges came. When you read to verse 11, you discover many three things at least. One, he was hungry. Is it true? One, he was very, very, very hungry. Number two, written through, he had no place to sleep. He was in the wilderness. He had no accommodation. And number three, he has no luxury things. He had no luxury things. When one is preparing for life, challenges will come. And it is wisdom on your side as a teenager, as a youth, to know that this is part of my life preparation. That I must endure. But often, a temptation will come around these three things. Temptations will center on these three things. If you conquer them, you will go far. Is somebody with me? If you conquer hunger, you conquer desperation for accommodation, and you cover and you conquer taste for luxury things, your life will sail safely. But a child that has not grown out of the room, a child that has not grown out of the room, his mind, her mind is on luxury things. Watch it. You will not end well in life. And that is the uh, origin of Yahoo, Yahoo Plus, Ritualist. And we are celebrating something year old. Is it JCK or JKC? There's one bench like that. I don't care to know. Oh, 17 years! 17 years! Ah! He hammered it. He did what? He hammered it. And a father is celebrating. That your child is a thief. Is an internet robber. Is a 419. Is a scammer. You are open it. He hammer it. And you are carrying offering to the church. Hammer offering. We will take it. Do you know why we will take it? We don't ask you where you come. After you are not giving me, you are giving to the Lord. And the Lord, whom you are giving, sees it all. And he's not accepting it. But will use it for you. Because we are his servant, we spend on his behalf. For the advancement of the kingdom. Praise the Lord. That is where we are going to. Now, the teenager see here. Hunger does not kill. It does not kill. He will not allow you to get to a place of hunger that hunger kills you. No! Both is say, since I was young and I'm not getting old, I've never seen the righteous. Neither his seed. Do you want? Beg bread. He's committed to making provision for the righteous. So the devil came. He knew he was hungry. So he tested him. Say, ah, if you be the son of God, if you know your identity, convert this bread, convert this to, to bread. Let me give him bread so that he'll lose his identity. Let me give him food. Jesus knew. Imagine, Jesus have just had a while, a while ago, you are my beloved son. That's why I read 3 verse 17. My beloved son, a voice from heaven, not from the earth. My beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Jesus knew that he was the son of God. In the presence of many witnesses, that voice, everybody heard it. And from there straight, say, oh, with what I have heard of God, let me go and prepare for the next life. Some people have heard word from God. You have, have an idea of what you should do in career, in business. You are not taking a step for preparation. You had it and returned home. Jesus did not return to the capital shop. 
he came from his father's house to that place for when he had what God wanted to do, he moved on to prepare his life for the task ahead. Some of us, many of us are failing because we are not preparing to do that which God is putting in our heart. Whether in your area of trade, in business, in career, we are too restful and we enjoy rest so much. But when you have taken a step to prepare to become what God wants you to become, hunger will come. Huh? It, it do what? Hunger will come. But give it not a time. Give, don't give it attention. I was going to the, to the university and my mother was crying. He said, who will help you? I don't have the money again. I'll give you everything I have. And I look at her. I'll be left with less than 200 naira when I arrive in Israel. And I look at her, turn to her. Say, don't cry. I won't even ask you for money from to, to, today or till I graduate. But any day you see me, I'm coming home with a degree. That's all. Hunger was not in my contemplation. How I'll eat or not eat, I don't care. But I know the Lord is taking me there. And he will bring me. And I return with a degree. There was hunger. I was so hungry a day. Hunger was while I was sleeping and my father appeared. The hunger that woke your father up. The father that died over 10, 15 years. Hunger died. He was even aware that I was hungry. That, that one I know that he's in heaven. The spirit of just men make perfect. I was sleeping. He said he came. He tapped me. Say, Sunday, follow Lalu, he be bonen. Sunday, follow Lalu, he be bonen. Sunday, don't give up. Hunger does not kill anybody. And he disappeared. He came to minister to my spirit. I know he's in heaven. Praise God. I said, What? Don't, and I didn't run away one day. And I didn't steal. Yet I was I found money. I live for something. I said, Hey, sister, the money is yours. I didn't say the Lord had money. I didn't steal. I didn't go after sugar mommy to give me food. What most fair young men are doing because of a car, because of a house, I'll marry you. And if it's not giving, you kill her. Shame on the day you were born. So, the second one was accommodation. That's where many people lose their destiny, especially ladies. As they are learning trade, as they are believing God for for job. Say, I didn't have accommodation. I could not pay. Uh, so, I'm staying uh, brother. Brother that does not go to church. Brother that has not opened Bible for you to read one day. Brother do not pray. Brother is touching you. You know no sir, that it's a fake brother. You are staying with brother. Is he brother? Leave that brother's house. He's cutting your destiny short. Second, another one, lost retain. This is the one that is destroying young people today. Nobody talk of a uh, Android phone again, you know. Even a child in primary four, iPhone Max 14, MacBook, Johnny, there's one, Oppo, or you look like one village from my people, Oppo, Oppo. Woo! SS1. Lost written. Do you know what the devil did? He took him to the pinnacle of the city. He showed him the beauty of the city. Are you getting that? Lady to verse 7 to 9. He took him up and showed him. The devil took him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple to see what? To see what? And say unto him, If that be the Son of God, can you say it is written? Come on. Where is the city that where he showed him the city? Praise the Lord. He showed him the beauty. He said the beauty of the city. 
And they then take him up to the man, city Martin, and show him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of the of them and the luxury. That what they call the glory. Fancy house, fancy cars, fancy handsets, fancy shoe, fancy gown. The devil will show you, say, ah, Jesus. Can you see all those things? If you bow for me, what do you say, verse 9? He will do what? If you and sell to him, all these things will I give thee. If thou will fall down and worship me, nobody give you anything for nothing. There's something you are losing to get something. And what you are losing to get that what they are offering you is more important than what they are offering you. It's your destiny you are losing. That's why some people can sacrifice their family, sacrifice their children. So he tells some money. He said, Come at the end of the day, bring your wife. After all, you have more, more money. Life is more important than money. What you lose to get what Satan is giving to you is greater than what he will give you. I pray this morning. That the devil will not take your time. Yes, if you overcome these three things, you say no matter. They say, ah, why is your phone having rubber band? What is the problem? Is it tying you? It's tying my phone, and I can receive call. So the moment you come and shame of your phone, you are about to fall. The people you carry handkerchief to cover it first. You are fake. You are bad to fall. The devil has seen what will offer you to take your glory away. Rise up, let us pray. Say, Lord, I will not fall to the trick of the devil. Whatever you are going through now is because it's part of life preparation. Somebody will fly from here. Somebody will fly. Don't let the hunger of today. Don't allow the hunger of today. Don't allow the hunger of today. Don't allow the scarcity. Don't allow your poor cloth to rule your cloth of today. Stop your great growth. Don't allow it. Don't allow the hunger of today. Praise God. Thank God I don't know how much cloth costs. A day, so say someone was wearing. I had a friend in Nairobi, and he always wear polo t-shirt and faded jeans. So I felt I should do charity that he doesn't have clothes. So we got talking, but I listened. And then, it's called that is a multi-millionaire. So we we're going out one day, and uh, I saw that where they're selling. The T-shirt was about four, five, seven times costlier than my coat, and my tie, and my shoe. The the polo. Do you hear that? The polo and the jeans. Then he took me for lunch, and the bill was over twenty thousand. Yeah, where this guy had from? But I came to his office. He confirmed set to construct an engineer. Having property. He started to share with me challenges and I pray for him. Sometime last year he sent me a good amount of dollars. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anybody that pass your fraud, you want to estimate the value or what he's wearing, you have a problem. Wait till your own. Say, ah, that person clock not fifty thousand oh so I can't wait. you now you know the price of your own. Oh. My own is the one of a uh, seven fifty. They say check you go get better one. Check now, check, check, check where the better better one day. Eh? What is paying me about about Adam and Eve? What is paying me when I day here? They say we are naked. Car, I'm not happy with them. That one you are wearing, the person is there. Especially, wow, what a gown! 
cannot be less than 75,000. It's admiring your own. You have a glory that covers what you wear. Don't lose your glory. Don't lose your place. You are in a life preparation stage. There's nothing I cannot do. I tell I told my friends, I say, look, I can trek. If need be, I'm going to trek. A friend was talking to me the other day, an army general. Say, what of your car? I say, it's a uh, mechanic. Say, ah, how can you do that? Say, that nah, we will meet. Say, how look? I say, I have legs. I went away. Don't want to do. He came and dropped me. He looked away. With his full ranks and complement of eight, they came and dropped me. What is my problem? I cannot go to fake it. I cannot squeeze it. I can say, Lord, church, the Lord say, if you don't give me a new car today, the earth is going to sink. Or I'll go and bring someone, say, I see God, tell everybody to bring me. I'll get a new car tomorrow. But I will not succumb to temptation or luxury. You should not do it. The Lord bless you. Your destiny will be fulfilled. When Jesus defeated Satan, verse 11, the Bible says, the angel came and did what? I'm closing there. The devil came and did what? Another translation, the angel came and killed for him. When you pass through at the end of your trial challenge, everything you lack, you will get them all. Angel came and provided for him. Angels came and cared for him. How are you getting it right? So, there was food, there was accommodation, and there was luxury. The ride on us, there was the best in anybody. He was cruising in sheep. You know, he was sleeping in a sheep. This man was crazy, what you call yach now. You honor him. There's, it's not a canoe because it had a place he could go and sleep. He was a big man. He was living a life of luxury. He was not traveling in canoe. You paddle here. No, he was not cruising on the sea and he slept off. Luxury. Luxury will come. Food will come. Houses will come. Can we pray from there? I will not trade my life for any of this. Hunger, there will be abundance of food. I will enjoy luxury in life. But I will not compromise my life to any challenge. I will face it to overcome it. I will not compromise. I'm ready to be hungry, to get out of this stage. Because when I've come, food was never a problem. He was giving people food people. 5,000 men excluding women providing food and drink. All that, that person that was hungry is a provider of food. Providing all necessity and he enjoy luxury. You teenagers, that is for you. Parents who have had your own. Speak. Our children are great children. Our children are great children. They are not like sons of Ephraim. They will not grow and see challenge of life and give up. They will fight and defeat. They will come up. Our children are notable children. Can we use this opportunity to pray for the children, the teenagers and youth in our church, in our midst? Use opportunity wherever you are. Raise up our children, our great children, our honorable children. Our noble children, our achievers, our goal achievers, they will not be distracted. Don't say, I don't have one yet, you have tomorrow. Your own is coming. Nothing can, can deceive them. They will not be defeated by the de deception of Satan. Anytime they are tempted, they have power and grace to overcome. We have mighty children. They are for signs and wonder. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever could tell, whatever could tell with us, the Lord said you could tell with them and you save our children. The Lord will save them from the hand of the wicked. They will not be the wicked ones and they will be saved from the hand of the wicked. They will prosper in their dream. They will prosper in their expectation. 
whatever they set their heart to do, they will accomplish. The Lord will preserve them day and night. They shall be celebrated. They are the savior that the nation of Nigeria, Africa, and the world will need. In the mighty name of Jesus, our children are not children that are pushed to order because they are sensible, they are wise, they are confident, they have knowledge, they have understanding, they have discretion, they carry solution. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to appreciate God. Begin to appreciate God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. In Jesus' precious name. Lord, I pray for every child here this morning, every teen, every youth, and every parent. Because it's a collaboratory effort, a collaborative effort. Parents doing their part and children doing their part. When Jesus was brought up and his time of calling came, he took charge of his life. The parents took him to the temple as the child. But when he grew, he took responsibility for his life. And when you spoke to him, he went to the wilderness to prepare for life. I pray that the same grace of Jesus will be upon our children. The grace of Jesus, the anointing of Jesus, the favor of Jesus, let it be upon our children. And as parents, O oh Lord, who will not be like the children of Ephraim, I should not be like the children of Ephraim. Because we'll show them whom you are. Who we'll lead. It may not be convenient, but for the sake of our children, we'll do it as part of training. So that they, they'll be inclined to you. I pray also this morning, will not be Ahab, will not be Jezebel. Anywhere there's a controlling force, we break that force today. Especially a force that is treating to ungodliness. That what killed Ahab. Ahab did not stand to put his leg on the ground and say, woman, sit down there. The young man said, he's not giving us, he's not giving us. It is his own. What is your own? Be quiet. Ahab did not do it. He made his wife his leader. In the name of Jesus, every controlling force he destroyed this morning. Let every man raise his head to assume responsibility for the family. Let every woman be a virtuous woman supporting the husband in the training of the children in a godly way. I pray today our children will not be found among those who are lined up on the street for a show of shame. You will preserve them. And they are preparing for life. Whatever stage they are, whether they are in school, school, university, about to enter, or those who are learning trades, learning career, studying something, waiting for an opportunity. Those who are even waiting to hear from you on what they will do, let help come today. Let the heaven open today. Let the grace and strength of Jesus come upon them today. Thank you, O Lord, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Before we go, quickly raise your offering.